everybody. Welcome to another Thursday night with Simply Made Local. I'm Abby. Ryan. Taylor. <laughs> Carrie. And we're the Fantastic Four from SimplyMadeLocal.com. We are an online handmade marketplace uh, where you can sell all of your crafts and unique items for sale. Uh, you can even sell it locally uh, in your own town. And that's at simplymadelocal.com. We've got a ton of makers who are just out putting their heart out and selling uh, some really incredible stuff. So definitely go on and check out simplymadelocal.com to check out our marketplace. However, every Thursday night here on Facebook uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we pick a craft and we bring it to you here live where we just – Get together as four girls and we chat about some really interesting topics and uh, we just make that time to to craft and then while we're doing it we're showing you we're breaking it down how to DIY it yourself so um, how was your guys this week this week I'm happy to be back I'm so happy, happy to see you guys there week with bananas <laughs> this back. week has been busy I wonder if my boss is watching. It's, it's craziness. <laughs> <laughs> but we are happy to be here. We've got a really fun craft for you this evening. So we're just going to take a second and let everybody get on. We've got uh, quite a few people joining us tonight. People are really excited. We've got a fun craft. Uh, we usually put out our supply list on Monday, every Monday, on our Facebook and our Instagram, at Simply Made Local. We tell you what we're making. We give out your supply list, so you're welcome to join us uh, with those supplies on Thursday and craft along with us, or you can watch us afterwards. But if you do make our craft, we invite you to post it on our page or our group, at Simply Made Local, or our group is All Things Crafty with Simply Made Local. We'd love to see what you guys are doing out there. We, we've been getting, uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing some families really taking time to get together and making some of these crafts. So that just makes us so excited. Yeah, it's super cool Like to know that people actually watch and enjoy what we're doing. So please tell us what you guys are got, got going on. <laughs> yes, yeah, we couldn't be more excited to be here. So uh, Ryan, do you want to tell everybody what we're doing this evening? Well, as you saw, we're, we're taking these cute little 3D pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, and we're making something that looks a little like this. Well, each variation of us. So we're going to be painting them, um, scrapbook papering them, and some people are adding felt flowers that they make. And I'm just kind of doing a little buffalo check for one of my friends, Ivory. So, um, yeah, that's what we got going on. <laughs> I Very love simple. this project because you can do so many things with this. You can yeah. do a lot and, and really make it uh, your own, uh, your own style to go with your home decor, or this could be something that goes outside. So uh, what you'll, you'll notice with us is we do a lot of uh, crafting from supplies that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if you've been to the Dollar Tree lately, but they've really stepped up their game. Oh, yeah. I know that Taylor and Ryan are usually our, our bargain hunters there. They go, they stroom, they walk up and down the aisles, and they yeah. just uh, look for ideas, and they do such a it's wonderful job. But Such a rough portion of our job, you know. <laughs> TikTok and Pinterest, okay? If I can just talk about that just for a second. I am obsessed with finding videos and tutorials and I know that we'll talk about Pinterest here in a second but and even our TikTok but I find so much inspiration from those two social media outlets just being able to find anything that has to do with and YouTube really because I find yeah, so many YouTube. dollar store DIYers there too but just finding different you know um, ways to kind of spruce up Dollar Tree or it doesn't even necessarily have to be Dollar Tree but just you know, items that are inexpensive is like, I'm obsessed with it. And I know Ryan is too. We'll talk about it constantly. Um, just because it kind of gives you like a weird satisfaction. I don't know if it's everybody or if it's just us, but like you just get this like, you know, couple bucks and you turn it into like this gorgeous item and it becomes like an addiction. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a stack of boards back there on my table that I made last weekend just because I felt like it repurposed Dollar Tree signs. 
Um, 99 cent store. We have a really good 99 cent store. I know a lot of people have Dollar General. So yeah, you can find really pretty stuff that, to repurpose anywhere. Yes, it's that is a lot of total fun. addiction obsession. Those TikTok videos are so satisfying because it's like done like that, and you just get to watch it from start to finish. Um, I really my TikTok feed is like crafters. All craft, crafters. Yeah. I'm just it's obsessed. obsessed with the um, the YouTubers that do like five um, Dollar Tree crafts in like ten minutes, and that's highly satisfying to me. <laughs> oh, I could just watch them for hours, and sometimes I do. <laughs> it's it's uh, research. It's marketing yeah. research. I'm, I'm working. Yeah. That's why when he walks in and I'm on YouTube watching craft videos, I'm working. I'm, I'm, I'm contributing. <laughs> so we are almost uh, ready to get started. We're just um, inviting some of our friends and other groups, making sure that everybody is able to join us this evening. Uh, so if you bought your supplies, you'll be able to follow along. And we invite you to uh, start a watch party on your own group if you think your friends would like to see what we're doing this evening or if you would just like to support us here at Simply Made Local. And uh, we are we have. four makers who support other makers, and uh, we just love that support right back. So um, we are just about ready to get started. I see that we have some people on, a good amount of people. You guys should put in the comments where you guys are from. We always like to hear where That's you guys are from. Because since we have people from all over the place that join us, um, and a lot of the times we don't necessarily get, um, you know, people that are, um, you know, returning all the time, we get new people a lot. So I'm just curious where you guys are from. Yeah. And also, if you, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Also, wait. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, I, I'm going to move on to the next uh, thought there. So <laughs> if you are not, um, <laughs> also, we'd love to hear what you have to say. So if you have any ideas on things that you would like to see as far as crafts, um, we want to know. We want to uh, break it down for you. We want to show you what we've got going. Uh, we had um, one of our makers reach out to us last week and requested uh, that we do a tutorial on bow making. And Yes. It blew my mind. I'm so excited. I am so excited to be able to do that. Uh, we're going to show you. So we'll be doing that next week. So thank you, uh, Soul Bloom Designs. Yes, uh, amazing headband maker uh, on our site. So she'd like to know how to make some bows. And I think with the upcoming uh, holidays, there's a lot of potential there on what we can do uh, with bows. So yes. we'll definitely um, hook that oh, up yeah. next week. Yeah, I'm really excited because that was like my very, very first crafting business was making bows and handmade uh -huh. baby kits. I don't know if my teenager is watching, but um, I used to make them for her. We lived in the South and it was very gigantic bow uh -huh. fancy bags. And so, yeah, I'm excited <laughs> for this one. Yeah, my five year old enjoys a good, enormous bow. So, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> She'll love it more if mommy makes it. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, please tell us where you're from. Tell us uh, if you're a maker, what you make. Um, if you uh, have a picture of what you do, please feel free to put it up. We want to see uh, what we've got out there tonight. So we're just gonna yeah. jump in uh, and get started. I think we're we're um, I think we're about ready. So Ryan, do you, did you go? We went over supplies, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, just to get started, yeah. first thing, like this is the way it comes. I know some of you guys took the bow off already, yeah, so you can take the bow off. off. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but if you don't, it is going to leave a little bit of glue residue, so I just sand it off. It's yeah, very sprinkle mine off. Or if you have like an X-Acto knife. I don't know why I did it. I did as well. So I took off my bow. Um, mm -hmm. So I have a little bit uh, kind of different. I think we all have something different going on tonight other um, than one. So we can kind of break that down. So tonight what I plan to do is, uh, so this is that 3D pumpkin. And what I'm going to do is to emphasize that 3D look. I'm going to stain uh, my pumpkin in the background here, a darker color, and then do this top part um, sort of a beige 
to kind of bring in that fall feel. Yeah. And then uh, I want this to last all the way through the end of November. So I plan to uh, add a, an embellishment on there to where I can uh, convert it to go from that Halloween feel to more of just that Thanksgiving fall harvest uh, look. So I'm going to be adding some uh, wooden beads. Uh, I'll be putting a wooden bead kind of uh, embellishment there, and I'm going to tonight do the first um, one, which I'm going to make it look more Halloween, more of like a candy corn type of, of look. And then uh, from the Dollar Tree, I also got a um, witch hat, which is another wood piece, and I'm going to put that at the end. So that'll be from Halloween, and then I'll be able to take that off, and I'll do a separate um, garland that's going to have more of that harvest feel, maybe some of that burnt orange uh, and darker wood look, and then I'll be able to put that on uh, for Thanksgiving. And I plan to put this up in a bookshelf, so I'm really excited to get started. So I'm going to start with putting the darker stain in the back to really make the 3D piece pop. Um, I love it. I love the fact that you're going to be switching out those two. It's kind of interchangeable. You can keep that decoration up for a while. I love it. Um, I'm going to kind of go over what I'm going to be doing as well. Um, and as far as the staking goes, um, I do a lot of woodworking. I have a lot of different stains. I don't like to use stain in my house. Um, my husband is, if he's watching, he loves to complain. <laughs> Um, <laughs> about the smell of stain in the house. I personally don't mind it, um, but he can't stand it. So I will always, if I'm doing a project in the house and it's quick and easy, I will always just mix my brown paint with a little bit of water and you will get a very similar result as far as this goes. Um, you do not have to use a real stain on something as small as this. Um, so the, just a little tip and trick super easy to do. You do not have to use a real stain. Also, I'm going to be putting um, some scrapbook paper down on my pumpkin over the top, kind of like Ryan was showing you. And I have two different black and white prints that I'm going to be incorporating onto my, um, the raised parts of my pumpkin. Um, I, believe it or not, ran out of Mod Podge. What? No. I know. <laughs> 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 so I mixed some Elmer's glue and some water and made my own mixture. We are getting very creative around the Bedetti household. Your craftiness. Wow. So <laughs> many people might not have known that that I didn't know that, that you could make that out of that. So there you go, folks. You learn something new every so, single time. <laughs> yeah, um, that's pretty and cool. And it will work just as well. I um, mean, some people actually prefer it just because it's a little bit of a thinner consistency. You can kind of move the paper around almost a little bit more. Um, just depends on your own preference. Um, and then I am, if you notice, I am a little bit weird about the hole at the top. So a lot of Dollar Tree products will come with this pre-drilled hole at the top so that you can hang the product once you're all finished. I personally hate looking at these holes at the, the end of this project. I don't like it. I'm very anal about it. Yeah, uh, so I'm you. finishing my project with the, um, the twine at the end. I'm just going to wrap this over the top. Um, along with that blue spot from the raffia bow that came with it. That's a cute and idea. I have a bunch of different felt pieces that I'm going to be doing some felt flowers with. I have been out of um, practice with my felt flowers for a little while, so we'll see how well those go. And then I just have some pretty basic greenery as far as leaves go. Um, I like to mix my textures a lot when I do my felt flowers. I like to throw in some of the um, fake greenery that comes with either, I collect this like when I go to Dollar Tree or to Walmart or where, wherever. When I use the um, flowers, I'll pluck off the greenery and I keep these for projects like this. So I'll mix this along with my felt flowers just to kind of give it a different texture. So that is the explanation of my pumpkin and I shall get started. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference I have is that I'm using one of these Dollar Tree black furniture repair markers, and I have to tell you, it goes on so easy. It comes with actually three different um, colors, walnuts, um, mahogany, yeah. and black. 
everything. It goes on great. So it goes on so easy. And then for when I fill the holes in, if I know I'm not going to cover it, like I'm not filling this one in because I did decide to cover it with the twine, but also it just gets a little bit of dry spackling. Yes. Dries really oh, fast. That will work too. Yes. And I have done that in the past on projects. I'm just really weird about it and I don't like it to like show if I'm not going to like use it as a hanging piece for whatever reason, I'm really weird about it. I also have a really good tip when you get to put the, when you go to cut out the scrapbook paper on here, um, I just take, take the piece of scrapbook paper. I'm doing like a bigger Buffalo check on mine and I, I lay it on the piece that's raised and I just push my finger down all over it, I'll put it this way. and like kind of put a line around there like this. Oh, that's a great idea. And then you don't have to worry about trying to trace it weird and cutting it. And then when you flip it over, you can see the perfect indent and then it's the exact perfect size of the top of the raised piece. So nice. that's what I'm going to be doing for mine. And I also am putting wood beads down, but at the bottom of mine, I'm going to put a little um, chalkboard, one of the mini chalkboards from the Dollar Tree so that you can write fall or boo or something. Mine's going to be more neutral for through the whole fall season. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Carrie, what you doing? Um, I am chalk painting currently. Um, for my stem, I mixed a couple different browns here because I thought my beige was going to be dark enough, but it didn't seem to come out quite as dark as I like, so I added some uh, melted chocolate um, to my old white chalk paint. So it's still got that chalky finish, but a little more color to it. And then I'm just kind of doing this off-white color, um, chalk painting the whole thing. And then I'm going to try to, I think, antique it a little bit. And then I'm going to be trying my hand at some felt flowers. Which you got it. You got this, <laughs> Carrie. You inspired me. So I'm going to do a couple little felt flowers for the top here because I've got some... Um, pretty fall colors. I haven't quite decided which ones I want to use yet, but I've got a whole bunch of them. And then I have some wool balls. About Carrie yet. She likes to pretend like she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> and then, out of nowhere, she pops <laughs> and surprise! She totally knows. Masterpiece! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> exactly. I really and don't, it, though. They look like we're way worse crafters than we really are. <laughs> I always come into these and I'm like, oh no, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'm already loving it so much. So fun. I love stain. I'm such a wood person. I love wood. Okay. And then also I'm going to be staining. Um, oh wait, no. For this one, I am not staining the beads. I am doing black, white, and orange to go uh, on the pumpkin. Cute. So. That should be good there. How I don't know you guys, but I'm just having, I am so excited seeing <laughs> all the fall stuff everywhere. Oh, Especially, yeah. it's Delicious. starting to flow in on the website at simplymadelocal.com. So we uh, just got um, our makers who every day are just uploading new products. Uh, if you're looking for a new place, a virtual marketplace where you can sell your products 24-7, please Come over to simplymadelocal.com, check us out. You can sign up and get 30 days absolutely free on us using code HANDMADE um, at sign up. Or if you just want to come try us out, we do have a basic free package and it costs nothing to you. Uh, it is no listing fees, no commission fees, no advertising fees, and we will advertise your products uh, across our social media. So you're getting uh, a ton of of bonuses and perks by just joining our creative community. Um, we have makers from all over the country and we all just support each other. We're there for each other and um, we just help to promote each other, which is which is really wonderful. So we're kind of that family feel of uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners. So please give us a chance. Come try us out. We'd love to have you, especially as we go into the retail season. It's just going to blow up this year because um, yeah. we don't have very many options at physical places. And I don't know about you, but 
I really want to support small uh, business owners this year. I want to shop small. I want to shop local. I want to keep my money in my community. And uh, Simply Made Local gives you that opportunity. So if you're looking for something uh, that is more custom, more personalized, more heartfelt as a gift to give this year, which let me tell you, we all need that this year. I think we all need a little bit extra TLC. Uh, we all need to just kind of show each other a little bit more love. So if you want to do that in a personalized gift, please come over to simplymadelocal.com and support uh, a handmade maker, a local artisan in your area, or somebody who uh, will ship to you. We've got a lot of makers available, ready to go. So we thank you, everybody, uh, for supporting small artists. Yeah, absolutely. It's so needed, especially right now. Yes, because, you know, a lot of these handmade makers have really been even diving more into their handmade businesses because they mm -hmm. have lost their jobs because of all of the right. thing that's going on. And I think that some of the other handmade marketplaces that are out there right now are more like big box now. They're just so massive that I think a lot of these smaller makers that we try to really support get lost in that giant shuffle. Absolutely. So, it's really hard to find the smaller ones on different marketplaces in more so we're really that um wonderful place and with that being said we are going into labor day uh this weekend and yeah. i couldn't be more excited to honor our american handmade um labor workers putting their heart and soul into their own products making them with their own hands uh if you're not a handmade uh, artist, you may not know this, but <laughs> when you own your own small business, you really put your blood, sweat, and tears into your business, especially as you get started. You have to. You have to really put everything into it. And so I just want to honor uh, you makers out there. Um, it's just it's, it's wonderful what you do, and you're really trying to use – your creative talents uh, to make an income and and that's courageous so hats off to you this Labor Day and um, we had a lot of fun this week just kind of talking about Labor Day and uh, we were actually looking into uh, jobs that aren't so um, <laughs> Um, I, fun, I would say <laughs> some not so fun jobs out there because you know we want to honor you too because you're you're the backbone uh, and you operate <laughs> in the background. We don't sometimes uh, uh, realize it. So we we want to honor some of our um, what would you guys dirty call them? Jobs. Yeah. Dirty jobs, dirty yeah. jobs, dirty jobs out there. Yeah. Oh my goodness! So um, so we each kind of oh we got some more people coming on. Hi. Oh, real quick, I want to say one of my best tips, and I think I've said it on here before, is that you're going to lay down your Mod Podge straight onto the wood, right? But instead of putting another layer of Mod Podge on the paper, I actually take a very light layer of water and just wet the backside of the paper. And I'm going to tell you, it goes on so much smoother, and there are no wrinkles. Like, I know sometimes paper and Mod Podge on wood can be difficult, but... I saw this on another, um, on a YouTube video of a DIYer I like and changed my uh, scrapbook paper and wood game for sure. I've had <laughs> excellent results. Yeah, I tried that and I don't think I heard the whole part about brushing on the water and I had to try about three or four times before I got it right. <laughs> yeah. I just like held it under the faucet. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and a light coat of Mod Podge and a light coat of water. Light coats being the operative yeah. word there. <laughs> oh, and then if you want to seal it, just be careful. If you put Mod Podge over colored paper, uh -huh. it can take the color off of it if you touch it while it's still wet. Yes, that's what I found out about three times. So. Okay. <laughs> right. that I finally got it right, though. Oh, I finally got it right. And that's what you'll find here, too, folks. Um, if you're just joining us for the first time, you may not know this, but a lot of these crafts we do for the very first time here live um, on our show. So we kind of uh, explore it for you, and we we uh, find out what kind of works and what doesn't really work. And there, there you go right there. We find out some tips and tricks. So uh, remember, every, every Thursday here at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, join us to uh, dive into a different craft every week. 
Okay, Abs, what was your fa or favorite or grossest dirty job? Oh, yes, back to the dirty jobs. Back oh, my gosh. Jobs. Okay. So, I, um, okay, so I am someone who loves the outdoors, but it's almost like an oxymoron because I hate bugs. Oh, my gosh. I can't stand mm -hmm. bugs. My husband will know that uh, I scream. I can't, I have the creepy crawlies, no. So I was thinking in my head, what would be so horrible is if I had to be an exterminator and like deal with infestations every single day. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. no, that, that actually gives me the heebie-jeebies even just thinking about it. So definitely dirty job for me. And I thank you to all the exterminators out there who are saving lives uh, on the daily. <laughs> <laughs> saving or exterminating are equally exterminating lives yeah but saving lives because i yes. legit could just <laughs> <laughs> me over here who tries to save as many bugs as possible yeah at work there was a daddy behind our toilet in our bathroom for weeks and taylor would not kill it <laughs> <laughs> what was in the toilet it was behind the toilet it was a little tiny uh daddy long leg <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. But yes, I don't blame her. <laughs> oh, daddy long legs I leave alone. Those are about the only spiders. The rest of them can go. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yeah. how names them, so there's that. I guess we're talking about this, guys. If there are any dirty jobs that you know about or have done, please, we want to hear from you. We want to oh, know because yes. we're I so curious. First-hand uh, dirty job knowledge. Yes. <laughs> okay, Ryan, what's a dirty job? Okay, let me, put, I, I made a list. <laughs> Ryan came researched. Oh, wait, hi, Michelle. I'm so excited that you're on. So it says Michelle <laughs> from Indiana. She sews. We used to be very near neighbors. We didn't live right next door to each other, but we used to be neighbors in South Carolina because her husband and my husband were stationed there. And yeah, hi, thanks for hi, joining Michelle. us. Hi, Michelle, thanks for joining us. Okay, so um, my dirty job, <laughs> I think that, okay, so I have two, one that really grosses me out and one that I think is really interesting. So um, my uncle Rick is an entomologist, so forensic entomology is always really fascinated me. I am super, super grossed out by maggots. Oh. <laughs> so no. that would be very <laughs> But it's still very fascinating that that these people can be around these bugs and blowflies and maggots and know like and that can tell them when how long a body's been dead or you know when somebody died or where they were because that bug only grows in this time during this this amount of days and I just think that that is utterly fascinating but completely disgusting. <laughs> With you, Matt Ryan, I think it's super cool. And then my the one I thought was the grossest and. I hadn't even thought about it, and once I read it, I was like, oh, yeah, somebody really has to do that, is because we all love amusement parks. There is really a person who's a vomit collector for, um, like, really crazy roller coasters. People throw up on those things all the time. And That's crazy. That's somebody's whole job. They get a whole big job off of collecting vomit underneath right. a so roller coaster. As a nurse, that is the one thing, that's the one bodily fluid that just I can't do. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think <laughs> my poor mother, though, she might be, if she's watching, she might be grossed out just talking about it, but, like, <laughs> if we ever threw up, my mom could not come be with us. My dad was always there, <laughs> because it would, like, if my mom even hears gagging noises on TV, she will throw up. Like, she <laughs> cannot handle it at all. You guys, being a mom is the ultimate dirty job. I don't care what anyone says. There you go. There you go. From Carrie. I was going to bring that up too. Oh my gosh. Mom is Projectile vomit from an infant all over my body. <laughs> <laughs> no, we call them code browns around here. My infant. Mm -hmm. Vomit. The other though right. had that too. The blowouts are fun as well. Blowouts. <laughs> I think I've been at your house when I like had a Brown out, Abby. Like, oh, brown out. <laughs> <laughs> explosion is how we call them around here. Um, All right, Taylor, what was yours? Because I think yours is super fascinating, as you know. Okay. So, um, if you guys haven't figured this out already, 
and I don't know if I'm weird or whatever, but like, yeah. I, <laughs> true, crime, no. true crime is like my jam. I just think it's like, I'm really into it. I'm fascinated by it. I think it's very interesting. And I have a certain um, just respect for the people that do crime scene cleanup. I think it's something that's super needed. Um, and obviously, you know, if it's your family member or if it's you, um, obviously you're going to need someone to do that job. Um, right. You're not going to want, you know, anyone else to have to do it. So I think it's very interesting and it is certainly a dirty job. So oh, okay. if you didn't know that, um, there is in, in fact, people that have to come and do crime scene cleanup. Um, and another one that I found super, super interesting, and I had no idea that this was a thing. Um, let me see. I got to find it. I made a list. because I was like, what is that? <sighs> okay, so a lift pump remover. So lift pumps are actually something that is in a wastewater treatment facility. But like anything else, wastewater pump, um, they, they go out. So when they go out, um, there is someone at the facility who is a technician. And when it happens, they have to manually filter the chamber, um, which is real gross. Like um, with what? Their mouth? Their bodies. What? So I want to see a visual of this. We need to yeah. investigate whether Micro ever did that dirty job because I want to see this in action. Seriously. Yeah. So that's the other one that I had. I, I was reading up on them, just kind of curious about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. So I ugh. would just probably be contributing instead of holding back. <laughs> 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 so those were mine. That, that has to be a toxic level of fumes. Yeah, I that's too much. God bless yeah. those people. <laughs> Okay. Okay. How about uh, septic tanks, guys, and porta potty oh. toilet collectors and cleaners? No, not a, not a. I'm just not sure that I could uh, be of that. I mean, it's absolutely necessary. These these people must exist for the rest of us to live our lives happily. But whew, that is quite the job. Wow. <laughs> yes. So I definitely have respect. And, and you know what goes along with all that, too, is, like, uh, first responders. Oh, so yeah. Not yeah. knowing what you're about to walk into, like, I mean, yeah. every minute of your job. They um, come up upon crime scenes, and they kind of have to clean up the patients if they're still living and take care of them. Like That's true. Kind of an all-in all in one there. All-in one. Yeah, they get they get it all, I would assume. And then there's like, you know, the the ones that get that people get themselves in like really awkward situations. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, with their bodies <laughs> doing <laughs> things that they shouldn't be um, doing. So yeah. are we saying ER nurses? <laughs> That's a dirty job. I know quite a few. Oh my gosh, yes. I can yeah. mm -hmm. sure. I can't I mean, even we're <laughs> and I mean I'm just saying I I uh, I found myself in a few dirty positions uh uh the time or two having to clean up a few things I didn't want to have to clean up or um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> it's so funny though because things. I feel like there is a, um, there's a nurse for every specialty, you know, because there are so many people out there that would tell me, oh, I don't know how you can be a labor nurse. And I'm just like, oh, I can do labor all day standing on my head. How do you do ER? How do you take whatever's going to walk in that door? Not sure. Yeah. <laughs> How do you, I'm, yeah, I'm um, who different. would say that to me? Like, I just want, the ER nurses I would talk to the most, and they would be like, well, I just want to get my patients in and out. Like, how do you manage, like, three Christmas trees worth of, of you know, different medications and whatever? And I'm like, it's better than pulling stuff out of people's weird places. <laughs> That's, That's so funny. funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but... Hats off also to our makers. We have to honor them too. So yeah. once again, head over to simplymadelocal.com. We are a handmade marketplace for all things uh, custom and personalized. 
Uh, we have a lot of people on there looking for uh, a virtual marketplace uh, with COVID. There aren't, you know, there are some states that are open right now, but there are still some states that aren't and don't allow us that uh, ability to go back to conventions or expos or craft shows or farmers markets. So if you need a place to sell your handmade goods, absolutely come check us out. You can list up to five items absolutely free on the website. Um, and the best part is, well, other than you're joining this amazing creative community, is that you get your own direct shop link. So you'll be able to share that shop link on your social media so that your customers can come to your uh, store. Specifically, they can shop around in your store. You can uh, give updates on when you're uploading new products, and uh, they can shop your store uh, directly. So that is super fun. I love that about our site. It's also very, very easy to uh, list a product. You can, in minutes, have a whole shop put up. You can uh, have your own logo and banner. And uh, we even have a very mobile-friendly version of the website. So even when you're on the go, you can just upload products, switch them out, keep things fresh. And for those of you who are makers that are listening tonight, the holidays are coming up. This is a great time to re, uh, do some new inventory, get things changed out, and uh, just freshen up that page. And then also you're going to show up in our new arrivals category. And uh, people love to shop that because they want to see what's new and fresh on the site. Uh, people are on that every day. So uh, make sure to get on and uh, do that. <laughs> Okay. So wow, Taylor, Taylor, look at that. Yeah. I love it. That's really cool. I'm going to make this bigger, but I like it. So I'm almost done with mine. Oh, pretty. Oh, I love it. The last thing I wanted to show you, too, is that I want mine to be able to stand up. I don't want to hang it. I want it to be able to, like, go on a table or a... Like, I have one that I made as my entry table. Um, so what I did is that I took these little wooden blocks you can also get at the Dollar Tree. You can use the Jenga tower pieces if you want, but the day I went there, they didn't have any. All they had was these. And mm -hmm. I just glued six across and two back like a T. I'm using my old school Tetris skills here. And then I'm just going to glue that to the back to make it a little stand. So, I mean, you can use whatever you could possibly have around the house. Love it, Ryan. Okay, so now I'm going to get my garland um, going. And for those of you who um, see those wood bead garlands and you've never made one yourself, it is so simple to paint these guys. You just get yourself a, um, a what are these called, a skewer, a wooden skewer. And you just put those right on there, and then you'll be able to kind of roll them around and paint those. Uh, really easily. Um, Abby, I really recently, they have this floral wire at the Dollar Tree, too, and I found that this is almost easier than those skewers, because sometimes the skewers, you can't get the beads through, but they always fit, and then you can, like, turn it and brace them so they don't spin around. Oh, very right. cool. So that's another great idea. I'm full of tips tonight. Yes, and if you <laughs> are. Other tips tricks and hacks we have an incredible craft blog on our website um we once a month run a our favorites article where you'll know that um, simply made local goes all over the internet all over social media and we find the very best of every craft that we can uh, and we bring that to you and we kind of showcase um, that theme. So over summer, we did summer barbecue. Uh, we did summer trends. We just did a back to school blog that featured the best of handmade makers uh, mm -hmm. that are doing homeschool uh, spin on their products this year. So if you're looking to do more of that homeschool classroom or you're looking for more of that uh, Montessori type uh, feel, then definitely check out our latest blog. And then coming up later this month, we've got our uh, famous fall fashion blog that's coming up. It's going to be incredible. And it's going to be different this year, just like all of 2020 is. It's just been different. So you're not going to see your normal, you know, scarves and beanies, which I'm sure that those will be in the article. We're going to find the very best of what we can, but we are going to surprise you with some really cool things this year. So that is to come later this month as well as on our Pinterest boards, 
we've got over a hundred boards um, and they're just buzzing right now. We have so many people going on there uh, every month, just looking over our boards to get tips and tricks, which we're thank you. If you do that, thank you for your support. We couldn't be doing this without you. We um, have almost reached 1 million 1 million views on Simply Made Locals Pinterest boards in this month. So we're almost there. I think we're at 900,000 something. So that just really uh, shows us that you support us. You like what we're putting out there. We're just, we're doing our best to just bring the very best of the craft industry to you. So uh, definitely uh, check that out. We've got um, fall crafts. We've got kid crafts. We've got a uh, Christmas decor coming up, whatever you can think of. I think we even have a whole board on just uh, pumpkin stuff, right? Yes. A whole board on pumpkins. And I made uh, like four or five new boards this week. I made one that was just wood bead garland ideas because I'm blown away. I'm like obsessed with, with beads. Right oh, now. Me too. <laughs> I, um, I, want to make a hocus pocus one because i was just repinning a bunch of our pins from last halloween's hocus pocus uh a blog uh, article so, oh, yeah. you guys, it is amazing please go check out our older blogs they're so great well you can go on pinterest and see it because i just repinned a bunch of them <laughs> a week until halloween yeah um and then i so i made one that was all bees <laughs> all about bees one was wood bees and garland um <laughs> One was, um, oh gosh, I, t why? I just totally went out of my brain. <laughs> um, yeah, I did that too. Yeah, total brain fire. I think one was um, these things, pumpkin, um, pumpkin wreath forms. Yeah, from our last week's wreath forms and pumpkins and some other Dollar Tree ball DIYs. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of new ones even. So definitely check them out. Definitely oh, fun. Oh, I was prepping for next week's bows. So there's a whole board about bows. Bows. And I can't, I cannot wait. So once again, somebody requested us to do a DIY tutorial on uh, different versions of handmade bows. So thank you to Soul Bloom Designs. We will be doing that next week. So if you would like to join us, um, we'll put out a supply list this coming Monday, and then we'll be back here next Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, doing all sorts of different variations on hair bows, gift bows, any kind of bows, we'll try it. And if you um, have any requests on bows, please reach out to us. You can uh, contact us on our uh, email at support at simplymadelocal.com, or you can reach out to us on all social media platforms at Simply Made Local. And if you're somebody who has not been on Pinterest before, it is so super simple. Go on there. Uh, I don't even think you have to sign up to look at people's things, but so go ahead no. and make yourself a profile, and then in the search box, go ahead and go to at Simply or just Simply Made Local. Simply made local. Yeah. Go right to our boards, and you can just scroll through. We have done all the legwork for you. We have found all the fun trends, all the fun crafts, and you just go in and take a look at those boards and see what's uh, going on for 2020. Really hey, fun. Wow, hey. look at that, Carrie. Oh, well, balls are fun. <laughs> and if you need um, to learn how to do felt flowers, we do have a tutorial on our YouTube uh, as well at our, on our blog, actually, and um, as well. So you're just going to click that <laughs> blog button and you can find out how Taylor, our felt flower extraordinaire, uh, goes over all of uh, step by step on how to make felt flowers. I don't know. I think our next one should be on Carrie doing them, man. She's kicking booty. <laughs> I, I know two kinds. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Though I did look at the tutorial and I was thinking of trying one of the ones that you did. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Hi, Marina. She says congrats and uh, she thinks it's amazing and congratulations on our momentum. So thank you, Marina, for, for giving us a shout out. <laughs> Right, so I'm almost done here with getting these and then I'll just uh, wrap my stem and I'll be done. Wow, I think I'm doing great tonight. Usually we, yeah. we're not able to get it done. This is a yeah, really can easy, easy fun one. It's super creative. All right, you guys, I have this other one. I, I think I want to put this uh, leaf. What do you think? Is that not, is that weird? Leaf? Oh, I love the leaf. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. Cute. I like it. Or, or do you want to do um, yeah, I didn't show my antiquing. I think uh, a pumpkin. 
Leaf. Oh, I like pumpkin right now and then switch it out for leaf during harvest time. That's a good idea. Yeah. How neat is this that you can just switch out? Uh, another fun one that we're doing here uh, coming up and we'll let you know when that will, uh, I think it's in the next couple weeks, is we're going to do the um, vintage red truck oh, yeah. or at least our take on the vintage truck and we're going to show you how to switch out uh, to be able to use that all year long and do that for every season. You'll just switch out what's in the bed of the truck to make it um, on trend for that season. Hold um, on, I'll grab mine that I made. Two. So two votes for the leaf, just saying. Okay. Oh, you're doing the leaf, huh? <laughs> Marina says leaf. Oh, Marina says leaf. <laughs> I think rosettes are the easiest felt flowers, or the ones, at least the easiest that I've looked at. Oh, um, Chris is just joining us, and he's asking, what are we making? Well, thank you for joining us, Chris. Uh, we are making a Dollar Tree 3D pumpkin boards. So we got these from the Dollar Tree. They are a 3D effect, and we're just putting our own spin on them to uh, create some really neat home decor. So we're making those look really fancy, and all we did was spend $1. One dollar. Okay, so I'll show you. I made this last weekend because I was super excited. So I'm going to be doing this truck. Cute. That is so cute. Yeah. And uh, it's on the back of a Dollar Tree sign, you guys. <laughs> That's fantastic. So we'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. We'll definitely put out a supply list and let everybody know um, where to get those supplies. Okay, so uh, I will tell you though, the red trucks are, uh, the, the, the truck boards are at Dollar Tree and I say go get them now because they are selling out so fast, but we yeah. will have alternatives for you, um, possibly on where you can find them otherwise, but definitely go check out Dollar Tree, snag yourself one and put it aside. Get a couple if you can, cause they're really, okay. they're for all different seasons, um, you can yeah. have them up for all the different seasons. Yeah, I'm super excited to make one. This one I knew specifically I wanted to be pumpkins, but I'm excited to make one with you girls that I can change out. Yeah, so you'll be able to change it out for Christmas. You'll be able to change it out for um, Valentine's Day, Easter, St. Patrick's Day. You're just going to put something different in the bed of the truck. So that'll be a, a lot of fun and a really great uh, craft that you can just keep with you all year long. <laughs> well, I'm so excited, my friend Ivory is going to be jazzed. I'm going to take these to her tomorrow. And... Very cool. Are you all done, Ryan? Yeah. Look at that. So look how easy that was, guys. Look. Oh, my goodness. Those are two oh, really, really beautiful, beautiful pieces. And look how fast and easy we did this. See, if you want to be extra and make a million felt flowers first, it's going to take <laughs> you a little longer. <laughs> Some of the second one ahead of time because I, I knew I wanted to get them both done tonight. But um, but yeah, those are really really cute, Ryan. Thanks. I like that they kind of go with your little fall theme you've got going on. I yes, and I this is this is these are the second and third ones because I made one for myself that's already downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you did something very similar to that with your tiered trade decor. Yeah. Yeah, my whole entryway is all buffalo check. It's not like me at all, but I really like it. <laughs> I know why I came over and I puked all over her entryway. Yeah. I was definitely <laughs> feeling the Taylor vibes for sure. Oh. oh, I get it now. I was like, wait, what happened? <laughs> I was very confused for a second. <laughs> not literally. Got it. Got it. Black and white. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm going to put a little bow on the stem, too. Those oh. tiered trays were s w probably one of my funnest projects that we've done, and that's up on our YouTube channel. So uh, I thought that was really neat. We made those tiered trays out of pizza pans and candlestick holders. And stovetop trays. <laughs> and stovetop trays. <laughs> my mom used to burn those all to the time back in the 90s. <laughs> 
Oh, mine was a um, a charger, charger plate. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. Ha I did make mine that was a cake pan, um, a pie pan, and the pizza pan. But I have made the stove cover ones too. Did your mom love hers, Ryan? Yes. Although it was too funny, like my dad was there that day, and so I was like, "Here, dad, will you take this to mom?" And he forgot it in his car for like three days. So I was like, "Hey, mom!" <laughs> and she's like, "What tray?" <laughs> I'm like, "Dad." Oh, dads. Oh, dad. Oh, they never the the completely forgetful dad thing never stops. Then I see. <laughs> My dad is so amazing, but he is a bit forgetful. <laughs> Seems to be a theme. <laughs> okay. What do you guys think? A little bow? Yes. yes. Up here or down? I down. think like right there. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And then I just use twine to just string the garland balls right on there. So I'm just about done. I'm gonna um, add my balls here. I'm gonna wrap the top of my thing. And then I think we're, is there, a, um, is there an order? Add the top of mine. No, I think You're gonna we're wrap good. yours with twine too? Yeah, I'm gonna put some twine at the top. Oh, fun! Flowers um, or did you decide against it? Am I the only one going through this madness? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, your felt flowers. Okay, I well. them. I, I really enjoy making them, actually. They just oh, no, I, I was cutting felt, Carrie. I'm making them. Okay. <laughs> I wrapped the top of mine because my hand started to cramp up from cutting. I couldn't find my small felting flat, uh, felting scissors. Um, so I just um, have to be one. so handy. And there's my hand is starting to cramp up. I have smaller scissors, but I can't find them. So I'm so, going to do these for my rosette. So I've got a tan in the middle, and then I'm okay. going to do the burgundy on the outside, I think. So, I love it. Basically. Pretty. It's going to be several so cute. Layers, several more layers of this, and we'll have a little flower that goes with this guy. I'll pull back here. Very cute. So. so you'll be able to see our finished products on Saturday. Those will be up on Instagram and Facebook. And you'll be able to see uh, kind of that finished product of all four. Yeah. Um, if you missed last week's, we did um, the Dollar Tree pumpkin wire forms. Oh, my gosh. We, yeah. in my opinion, knocked it out of the park. They are incredible. For what you will see uh, that we were able to do, that we got that for a dollar, it, it's comparable to something that you would find for $30, $50, upwards to $100 uh, at a retail store or um, online. So super proud that we were able to put that together. And yeah, uh, you'll see that um, on Facebook and YouTube coming up here. So I think we're just about ready to wrap it up. We are going to show you our finished product on Saturday. And if you ever have any questions on how we made anything or how we put anything together, please reach out to us, support at Simply Made Local or uh, DM us on any of our social media channels. Uh, we are so thankful uh, for everyone who joined us this evening. Thank you for those who crafted along with us. We hope to see your finished products uh, on social media here soon as well. Um, and make sure to check out simplymadelocal.com and support uh, some local artists. Uh, we are the Simply Made Local team, and we are so thankful to have you here every Thursday at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we will see you back next Thursday right here with a new craft for bow making. Woo! <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>